Hi, I'm Sarah from Ugly Duckling House. And I am Annika from Annika's DIY Life. And we have a collaborative project for you today that we were working on because Annika came into town for WorkbenchCon. If you've never been to WorkbenchCon, it is a conference for DIYers just like us. You learn woodworking skills, you get to see new tools, you get to hand out stickers to a whole bunch of other woodworkers. It's a lot of fun. And we decided to take this opportunity because I was here anyway to help Sarah with a really fun project. You guys already know that I've been turning my old office into my son's nursery. And that meant I needed a new office and I decided to take over the dining room to do that. So of course that means new projects. And Sarah had this amazing fun idea to put some plants near the window and we're going to show you what we did. Yes, it's a shelving unit but the challenge here is that you don't necessarily have a lot of great support in the middle of a window in order to install shelves. So we're going to show you exactly how we did it and if you would like I've also got some plans for you at the end of the video and links below. So stay tuned. It's a great project. It is really fun. Wait till you see it. First things first was painting the room. I decided I wanted a three-quarter color block treatment on the walls, meaning that I wanted the top section painted a completely contrasting color than the bottom section, and I wanted this all the way around the room. I chose a custom off-white color for the top section, and you may see that there's still a space close to the ceiling, but don't worry about that. It's going to get covered with crown. So we've got two quick tips. One, right now what I'm using is delicate surface paint because I've recently painted the upper part of the walls and I don't want that paint to peel back off. And if I use traditional painter's tape, it might happen. So instead I'm using delicate surface that's meant for recently painted surfaces. Then I am trying to get this crisp, even line. And I wanna show you a trick on how we do that by painting it first with the top wall color and then we paint it again with the lower wall color to try and create a nice seal on that line and make it nice and straight. There are actually several different methods to try and get a nice crisp paint line using painter's tape. And this is just one of the options that I'm using here. My walls are nice and flat, so I find using the existing wall color to seal the tape and then the new wall color on top prevents bleed through. But other methods may be more effective with textured walls, such as caulk. I have considered doing a video in the future comparing the different known methods that are out there. So if this is of interest to you, let me know in the comments. This isn't quite a perfect timeline because I finished the window wall while Annika visited and the rest was finished the following week after she flew home. But let's pretend they were all painted together. And the next step was then to go grab supplies for a project. Just a word of advice for beginners that when you're picking out your lumber, it really is best to take your time and pick out boards as straight as possible. And it may get frustrating at times because you may have to go through quite a lot of lumber in order to find the straight boards that you need, but it is worth the extra time. And just be sure to put everything back the way you found it. Another quick tip, don't rely on the ends of your lumber to be perfectly square straight from the store. Instead, cut the ends yourself and then make your measurements. This helps to minimize gaps and make sure that the pieces from your project line up straight. I've always found that if I ever get a little bit of tear out, nothing major, I can take a tiny piece of scrap wood and just kind of run it along the cut and it mostly just kind of disappears. Almost like using sandpaper, but not really. Just thought I'd share that little tip. What we've done here is created a stop block. What that is, is just some scrap wood that we've clamped to the miter saw so that we can repeat the same length of cut every single time. All I have to do is take this piece and push it up against the stop block. And when I cut, it'll be the exact same measurement as these two pieces. So I can create multiple pieces over and over a lot faster by not having to measure. Check this out, like we are using every bit of this wood that we possibly can. That's the last cut I need, and that's the scrap. <laughs> So 
we're making pocket holes in these two by two boards that are going to be the shelf supports. And whenever you make pocket holes, you want to use the thickness of the material to set your drill bit as well as your drill guide, which is this guy right here. This is the crack K4 that we're using here. So you got to set it to the thickness and two by twos are one and a half inch thick. So that's what it is set at right here. And no matter what, you always, always want to make at least two holes in each board because if you make only one hole it's going to be a pivot point and it, the joint is not going to be strong enough so you always always want to make at least two holes and always double check the thickness of your board before you start making the holes because there can be thickness variations that you have to account for i do have lots and lots of resources about the crack jig on my website and i have a video class that takes you step by step through the whole process with lots and lots of tips and tricks and all kinds of situations and different pocket hole jigs as well. I will have Sarah add a link to that in the description below. Whenever you want to make repeated spaces and repeated cuts, it's great to have things like stop blocks or spacers. This spacer I'm using, I'm going to cut down to the exact space that we need in between each of the shelf supports so that we can get the measurements exactly right. This is going to save us a lot of time because then we won't have to deal with our tape measure. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are plans available and linked in the description that include measurements and a cut list. There's also some slight modifications to the plans from the end result because we were making adjustments as we went. So there's also a supporting blog post at UglyDucklingHouse.com if you're looking for more details as I tend to offer more tips directly on my website in case there are additional questions. Before I could place the final assembly in the window, I used a multi-tool to cut back some of the chair rail. I like to remove small pieces at a time and go back and cut away more if needed rather than trying to get the measurement exact on the first try. It's always easier to cut away more than to try and add back if you cut away too much. During the installation, I tried to be mindful of exactly where the shelves would be and exactly where the rest of the assembled shelf supports would be in order to hide some of these screws as I installed. I really like the way that it looks in my office and I also really love the way it looks even from outside looking in. So thank you so much to Annika from Annika's DIY Life for your help. This was a great project to work with you on. 
For lots more DIY tips and tricks and project ideas, be sure to subscribe to Ugly Duckling House here on YouTube and hit my blog at uglyducklinghouse.com for more details. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.